Yo, yo, Mike Check, we are live. It's your favorite hip hop connoisseur, Drew Soul Quest, and you are watching Quest Convo, where we talk the culture because we are the culture. Hey, man, it's your boy, Dev Devious. We back in the building one more time, man, to give y'all what y'all came here for. So let's get into it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How you feeling, man? Uh, I'm feeling good, man. It's a lot of a lot of moving parts going on, a lot of stuff going on. And, you know, but that don't never <laughs> yeah. stop the grind. That don't never stop the grind. OK, for sure. For sure. Yeah, man. You you had a bad week, man. You know what I'm saying? But you, you're a strong black man. You'll be fine. But you had a hell of a week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's. It is what it is, you know, and for all them people who who go through things, man, you're not by yourself. You're not alone. Um, bad things happen to good people all the time, every day, all day. And it ain't right and it ain't fair and it ain't none of that. But, you know, at the end of the day, don't none of that matter. You got to keep on going and you got to keep on trying to keep on making it happen because that's really what's going to matter at the end of the day. The results ain't nobody going to care about everything in between. For sure, for sure. Look at them wise words right there. He on his grown man shit with them wise words, y'all. <laughs> it is what it is, shit. It, you know, that's what it come down to. Hell yeah, definitely. Uh, but once again, man, we appreciate everybody for watching and supporting Quest Convo. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification button so you are aware every time we drop this dopeness for you. Uh, also, do not forget it's summertime y'all it's finally hot in this bitch everybody is wearing t-shirts shorts whatever your favorite kicks hey to go along with them dope ass kicks check out dopesthiphoptees.com dopesthiphoptees are cool tees and hoodies made for cool people that love hip-hop culture they are created by cool people that love hip-hop culture black owned for the culture Hey, we, we got it going on over here. Y'all got to check it out. DopestHipHopTees.com right now. Uh, if you go at your uh, purchase, put in the promo code I Love Hip Hop. You get 20% off your entire purchase. Y'all check it out. DopestHipHopTees.com. We work to work, you like to work, I holla in the Senate wow. You know my pride was colder than Chicago in December Yo, yo, we back So today, we gonna go on, me and Dave about to go on and get into it uh, Now keep in mind, y'all, uh, when it comes to hip-hop uh, You kind of have, you, you ha you're gonna have your classic albums you're going to have your classic albums that are synonymous with everyone, your main people that love, whether you love underground hip hop, whether you love mainstream hip hop, gangster, whatever kind of hip hop you like. There's a list of classic albums that I'll say the masses are going to agree with. Like everybody going to say Nas, Illmatic is a classic. Jay-Z, uh, first album, Reasonable Doubt um anything with like wu-tang's first album those are like synonymous with the masses yo yo average hip-hop fan is going to say those are classic albums everybody can agree on that rock him big daddy kane even if uh you say drake's first uh that that so far gone mixtape different things like that everybody's going to agree on but then you get people like me and dev you know we're we're the kind of connoisseurs we love the on the surface stuff but then we also go a little bit deeper. That shit that's not going to be mainstream. That shit that's not going to be easy to find. That shit that you can try to have a conversation about it with somebody. And they'd be like, oh, I ain't never heard of him, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So fa people, fans and connoisseurs like us, we go a little bit deeper. And there is a whole underground of hip hop that you may or may not know, but then they have their set of classics as well. So that's what today's show is pretty much about. We're talking about the unpopular, unorthodox classic hip hop albums, which just basically means what I say. It's just albums that 
have been put out by artists. Technically, I'm not even going to say they like underground, underground. They're not totally like independent. Some of these artists are actually in the industry. They just not household names, but they have put together bodies of work that to the masses that are familiar with that unpopular, unorthodox, underground kind of hip hop. These are classic albums. So uh, me and Dev, we picked out a few of ours. You may know about it. You may not. You may agree. You may not. But we're about to go on and get into it. So the first one is I'm going to put this one up here. Let me all see. I'm doing too much. I got to get the other shit out the way first. No, no. <laughs> yeah. At least they, it's just a preview. They they know what you're going to say. So right. There you go. So this first classic, unpopular, unorthodox classic hip hop album. One of my first choices is going to J Lib champion sound now j lib is a group composed of two of the best hip-hop producers of all time uh can you hear me huh i was gonna say real quick you uh you got the graphic up in the middle of the screen Oh, I know. I, I want. Oh, okay. I oh, okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Okay. I'm gonna okay. put yours up too. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know if you like meant the video or something. And it was supposed to like go down or something. Oh, or no, if you no. meant to keep it up. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Oh yeah, we good. Yeah, my fault. My fault. Oh, you good? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> I got the uh, first. My first choice is J Lib. So, this album is called Champion Sound. Uh, it was created. This came out in like 2000 something, but it, but first of all, it was created by two of the best rap producers of all time. And that would be JD, J Dilla, whatever you call him, whatever you know him by, uh, represent Detroit. Uh, his claim to fame is Slum Village. And then Mad Lib, another West Coast genius, a legend. Uh, he stays active in the rap game. He's done multiple uh, dopeness in the rap game. A lot of his recent shit he's done with uh, with Freddie Gibbs through the years. People love that music. Um, but he's been around, um, yeah, a long time, long time. Rest in peace to Jay Dilla. Um, he's no longer with us. But that's a damn shame. It it is, man. Like, could you imagine if he was still around? Like some of the shit he would do yeah and some of the people he would work with and what we could have got out of that yeah yeah seriously it's a damn shame. Like, like i honestly i think i'd be thinking about shit like what if him and yay got to make an album that shit that's might not have been fair. just that's not fair you can't you can't say stuff like and see so, and when you say shit like that it's almost like you know maybe the creator had to do something because shit i don't know if we deserve that album man whatever that would have been i don't especially not especially like pre crazy shit kanye before he started doing all this ridiculousness yeah you know that like mid-2000s kanye and then and then uh jay dilla yeah yeah might not might not be able to beat that <laughs> right for real <laughs> straight up but uh yeah they collabed on this album um it came out i want to say in like a 2010 ish 2012 it's so crazy. Like they have it on the streaming services, but they got the wrong date. Like they, I seen it on two streaming services. They got it, uh, twenty sixteen. It did what? not come out no damn twenty sixteen. It you came out in two thousand three. To be correct, if you really that's what wanna, I was saying. I, right. Yeah, if you want to be technical, it came out in two thousand three. See, but, okay. look at you. You on your shit. I, I, I'm, and I knew that didn't felt right when I said twenty ten. I'm like, I'm going to say 2010, but I was like, in, in the back of my mind, I'm like, that shit was even before then. Well, on a side note, what I, I know I could be wrong, but what I've started to notice about the uh, the streaming services, especially as they starting to put some of the artists' older work, you know, some of their mixtapes and stuff like that on there. I I don't know if it is that or not, but I don't know. It maybe it's, it seemed like that's kind of like the date that they put it on the streaming service, maybe. Like, you uh, know... And I don't know if that's true in some instances, but I kind of noticed that with certain stuff. I, if I'm paying attention to it, um, I noticed that like the year that they put the mixtape on there is the year that they say, oh, like I'll trying to say that that's the year it came out. Like 
as if people don't know about it. But, uh, you know, whatever. I let them think that they smarter than us. So really, if they doing that, that that sucks. Like that's yeah, nigga. I don't care when you put it on the service. If I'm a really want to know about the project, I want to know what year it came out. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. When you put it up. Yeah. You can't you can't tell me, you know, straight out of Compton came out in 2009 <laughs> and I know and I know and I know the shit dropped in 1988 no you right can't do you can't yeah. do that really I did not know that now that's just my hypothesis I don't know if that's actually what's going on but that's just okay. my two cents it could be that makes sense because okay because I see that a lot I, I I honestly do I see projects no I know for sure like the year it came out and that shit yeah is it's That's funny crazy. you say that. It's funny you say that because I, yeah, because I've noticed that too in the past couple of years, and I straight be looking at my phone, and I was like, "It, it what? No, that's not possible." Right. I'm like, "When, no. when the hell did this? When did this uh, 2004 ass project come out in 2019?" Right. So yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, but man, I'm about to uh, I'm gonna play this little clip so y'all can just get a glimpse of some of the greatness on this uh, project. <laughs> Holla, get it, popping off from the bottles to the collars. Clap hands, nigga. Get live with it, party with your mans, nigga. Uh, it's the official. Hands in the air, let me see the wrist flow. Turn me up another notch in your system. You said you want the hot shit to listen. Mad Lib and JBZ do it. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. It, 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 just to go on to Mad Lib a little bit, because I actually have him on my list also. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, it just, he's so good. It's like you when you first hear his shit, you was like, there's no way this shit's going to work. And then when yeah. you listen to it, and then you get done listening to it, like you just like that shit was was fucking great. So I ain't never seen a producer just do me like that, where I'm just like I'm I'm coming into the song. What the, what are you doing? And then I listen to the song. I'm like, oh, that's what you was doing. Oh shit. Okay. I was just like, that's just that's that. When we say unorthodox, that's what we mean. It's just some shit that shouldn't work, and it just it do somehow in some way, shape, or fashion. It works whether it's it sell like it's 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 not supposed to, or it, it get you know praise more than it probably should have, or more than the niggas who made it thought it would, or anything like that. It just sell millions more than it probably should have. It's just a whole bunch of weird thrown together shit that you know on the service level. You you even when he probably making it, he probably don't even know what he's doing. But but at the end of it, you, you it come together beautifully. Hundred percent. Like you, you hit it right on the head. Like you can't even do a, a unorthodox or unpopular list in hip hop and not have these two guys on it because they was both the epitome of it. Like you said, you you hear the beats they put together. You just like, how did you even come up with that shit? How where did your mind go to even come with that idea to try to make it into a beat or a song? Right. You know, it was just especially with mad live like like jd they both was i'm gonna say maybe neck and neck but i'm i'm gonna say maybe even so mad, mad I'm going mad live. Yeah, yeah he was even more weirder when without was, it, without a doubt especially when you even get into uh like the alter ego shit with the quasimodo shit you get into that that's a whole nother a fucking <laughs> cartoon on wax ass shit nigga that, yeah, that's yeah yeah and then and then it, it and then just I put this on there with it. There's a reason why Adult Swim took a liking to him and his music, and they chose to use a lot of his music for their promotional material and things like that over the years. There's a reason why it fit what the fuck Adult Swim was trying to do because they already on that weird unorthodox "what the hell are y'all doing" type shit. So it's only right that you get some music to go right along with that that fit that mode. Hundred percent, yeah, he fit right in with the brand. That it made all the sense in the world. Um, but yeah, man, that's my first choice, definitely, y'all. If y'all don't, uh, first of all, if you are any kind of hip hop fan, you should at least know. I, I'll say you at least should know who Jay Dillard will, was. He he was a little bit more 
they both was underground, but I would say maybe he was a little bit more mainstream because he did shit with uh, you know, with Busta and uh Tribe Called Quest. I think the nigga even produced like a, a song for Janet and shit, Janet Jackson at one time. So he was a little bit more out there. Um, but yeah, if y'all don't know, check it out. You will not if you're a hip hop head, you're gonna love this album, especially if you're not familiar with it. It's Champion Sound by J Lib, and it's on all the streaming services. Uh, so I'm getting to my next one. Uh, and I'm gonna say one thing too making my little unorthodox list, I had to, you know, once again, you know, I'm all about the balance, so I had to make sure I maintain that balance. But as I'm making it, it made me realize how much I used to fuck with and still like that hardcore gangster rap shit. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, yeah. I was coming across all kind of shit like, oh my God, this shit right here was just, uh. Right. Yeah. And but I that's, that's it. it. And I just be like, I'm a sidebar just for a quick minute. When, when I listen to stuff like that, now that I'm older and I still like it and fuck with it, and many other people do as well. I know people, grown ass people, kids, all that shit and still love that hardcore shit and i just be like in hip-hop are we all just hypocrites i i, I mean and i'm yes. okay to accept that title if it is but I, what do you think i think i think so but at the same time we the only people who you know we're the only people who kind of get put into that where you know i i was even before you started showing me a lot of the stuff that you showed me with the music, I knew even before that, like, you know, this shit ain't just everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just look at it like it's a, I always knew to look at stuff as a form of entertainment. I don't know if that was just something I was blessed with or whatever, but I was able to anything, movies, games, music, for the most part, if you ain't already doing shit like this, being portrayed in whatever media you're consuming, then it's just that at the end of the day, it's entertainment. So, you know, I, I, I don't know, but it, it's something about that hard shit that, that, that <laughs> it's something about that, 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 you know, that, that get rowdy shit. I, and I feel like it's in our genes, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just that, that, that same shit that we got tapping to when we was over there fighting leopards and, and jaguars and shit. It's the same. It's the same shit, and I feel like it. 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 It meshed with us, with our, with our spirit. <laughs> yeah. It. It awakened that. That's that. That motherland spirit from you know back in the day where we like, oh, where, where the, where the hippo, hippo at? That motherfucker about to eat us or some shit like that. You know where I don't know how to explain it. It's, you know because I love everything else too. I love the you know this, that, and the third and all that. But you know. If I just throw on some some future, I you know I don't mind that. That's 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 nice. This is nice. I, I appreciate the future. Side yeah. note, side note to anybody listening. I don't know if you like the new future. I don't like that shit. I don't. It, it like it's okay. It's okay, but it's like this future is capable of so much more than whatever this last album was. This shit was just a one big long runoff sentence. <laughs> with no periods, no punctuation, no commas, no exclamation points, nothing. It was just, it just felt like one song just melted into the other. <laughs> and I, I hate, I, I hate, I hate when artists do that shit, you know, where it's just like, I, I don't like how, you know, your your sonically, your whole album is just like, it's no pace, it's no rhythm, it's no cadence, nothing. It, it, it's just off. It's just a bunch of songs that you just threw together. Like, stop. I need people to stop doing that. You know, if you're going to come out with an album or you're going to do something like shit, take you, you going to you put your name and you trying to make money off of this. Put some. Don't you want to put some good shit together? That's why I want to ask some of these niggas. Don't you want don't you want to put a good shit together? And instead of just throwing some shit out, just to say you put something out. I, I, I start to think that's what niggas is doing. Just putting shit out for the sake of just putting it out. And just, you know, well, niggas are bad anyway, so fuck it. And I'm just like, does that satisfy you, though? Does it really satisfy you? You know, because I'm like, God, feel like, does that competitiveness of it come in? Like, I want my shit to be better than whatever these niggas going to hear for the rest of the year or some shit like that. Hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I, uh, 
I've spoken on that before because, you know, once again, I mean, when you're on even a bigger artist, once you involve the label and all that stuff, you got a lot of people uh, with their hands in your creative process and, and what should be released and what kind of songs you need to do. And I don't know how much that influenced the artists because it seems like artists of that caliber, like Future, you would kind of have for real that final say. So like, no, I'm not. I, I got to do it like this. I, I think right. it'd be a little bit of that. And then I also think it'd be, I don't know. I, I, I think it'd be a little bit of laziness on the part of the artists, like artists of, of that caliber. When you, your, your yays and your futures and your drakes, you know, at the end of the day, their fan base is so huge. Whatever the fuck they put out, I could say it's trash. A whole bunch of people could say it's trash. But you still going to have a big part of that fan base that's going to fuck with anything you put out, anything you put out. Oh, my God, it's the best shit ever. And yep, a lot of millions. Not. And they know that. So they like, yeah, man, I'm trying to do this movie shit. I'm trying to do this other shit. I'll just put something out real quick to say I put something out. I mean, it's cool. It, it ain't, it's all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't think they yeah. really lock in and they don't care about really trying to go that extra mile, dig deep and impress. They just get lazy with it. You know what I mean? I, uh, yeah, I, I guess, I guess so. Uh, it, it, but I, real quick to go to your point uh, mm -hmm. about the labels, then we'll move on. But just like, you know, I would think as a label, if, if I'm the label, and you are the artist, you, so of course, are the artist that I want to sign, that you are on my radar. Why would I sign you and then try to make you do a whole bunch of shit that you wasn't doing to get you on my radar and to get me, get you noticed by me in the first place? That just seemed counterproductive, counterintuitive, all that. You know, because you're going to change me from everything that got me signed, that got me noticed that got me popping and buzzing and all this other stuff to do something completely different and try to manufacture a whole new buzz and a whole new, you know, following and all. And like that just, that's kind of stupid to me. Yeah. I, I don't get it. Um, the only thing that I can come up with it, with that is I think they have like a half and half kind of mentality. Like, yeah, we, we signed you because of A, B and C. And we do want to keep a certain aspect of that, but we know how music is so driven now with the internet and the algorithms and what's trending and what's viral and what's this and what's that and blah, blah, blah. So they get all these analytic niggas and numbers and shit involved and they like, okay, we still, we'll let you do, you know, a little bit of you, but you got to do this too, because this is, these are the, what the numbers say. The numbers say you got to blah, blah, blah. And this is what's hot. And this is what's viral. And I, I think it'd be a combination of all that shit. Once again, motherfuckers that don't know about music getting involved with all these numbers. Yeah, and exactly. Right. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I'm like, get away from me, you fucking nerd. I know what I'm doing. You don't know shit <laughs> about nothing, you fucking nerd. Okay. Yeah. This, this, why y'all got this geek in my face, man? Let's see, I couldn't be in the industry. I'm like, why you got this geek ass nigga in my face, bro? Who is he? Has he been in the booth? Ever? Exactly. Anytime? Do this, what rap do this nigga know? Name what, what rap what you number, know. What number one hits does this nigga drop? <laughs> I got ten of them. And you yeah. and this nigga, I just I've been rapping. I've been in the game. <laughs> I was saying somebody like Snoop. I done been in this shit for 20, 30 years and shit. And right. you got this, you done brought this geek in yesterday trying to tell me what to do. Yeah. I'm offended. <laughs> exactly. I'm offended by this geek that y'all trying to talk. Man, get out of here, nerd. <laughs> Fuck, you fucking lame get away from me hell no yeah. yeah but uh oh yeah to bring it back around like i was saying I, I i was bringing up the whole hypocrite point with the music and gangster rap and all that stuff because i'm just looking at it like yeah as a grown man kids and all that stuff you don't want none of this shit for your kids i don't want to see another black man die i don't want to see drugs destroy the community no more i don't want to see any of that but I have to, like you said, I kind of have to go to my place of it's entertainment and this and that. But once again, it's hip hop. And it's like hip hop is always held to be so true to form and true to what it is. I just be torn with it. And I'd be like, 
man, it's some hip we some hypocritic ass motherfuckers. Yeah. But yeah. I go there with it, but then I just be like, hey, that's every, ain't like, nobody perfect. We all got flaws. And hey, it, it is what it is. And, and like you said, um, I think it affects the ear differently if you raised on some gangster shit, regardless outside of the music, and then you got this gangster music to really just stamp reinforce lifestyle it. you're already in. I think yeah. it pushes you and influences you more. It, yeah, it. it's it's different when you talk about a nigga talking about shooting somebody, and you can actually go outside and, and see that same shit that's being right. told to you on a record in real life. Right. As, but I but I was gonna tell you, you can I can be I can you can take a little bit of solace in the fact. But you at the same time, yeah, but you got a whole bunch of white people who ain't never and don't never want to see no shit like that and wouldn't know how to act if they was in some shit like that, singing the shit along with you. So we oh, both yeah. some dumb so we all some dumb asses. Yeah. Yeah. We uh, all we are we all fucked up. White folks is what took gangster rap to the next level. That shit it, it fascinates them. It, they are excited and fascinated by gangster rap. Always have, always ah! will be. Oh my god, look at this hoodie. Hey. Oh my it's god! A no, hood adventure, nigga. It's some yeah, nigga. When they when it's in a walk, man. Until I'm walking down the street and they they cross the street blatantly in front of me and put their purse on the other shoulder, then then it ain't it ain't no goddamn fun then. Right. It ain't no yeah. fun then. Or you gotta lock your damn car doors as I'm walking past and shit. You know, <laughs> you, you, it, it's all a matter of perspective and where you came from and you know your walk of life. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let me get into uh. So with us speaking on the gangster shit, I think this will be a nice ass transition. This shit right here, I got two songs. I don't know if you've heard them or not, but these two songs are the most, to me, two of the most gangsterous motherfucking songs ever. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna drop this one first, see if you know. Some murder, flex the body, snatch a snatching hoes like a bitch. Kill a slice of niggas that holds apart. I didn't wanna go this far, but get to the heart. Had to whip out my fucking change the more they stay the same a hundred percent because what is this what is this 30 what is this 25 30 fucking years ago was this shit came out when i was one nigga one thousand percent it came out when you was one and and, and that's what and i the, right there and i'm 30 I, by the way y'all i'm 30 by the way before i give my, before i even give my take on this that be my point exactly where i be well, I feel like with hip hop, where sometimes it be an issue amongst the the youngins and the the old heads, they be acting like we so out of touch and so out of. I'm like, nigga, no. we were raised on this shit, nigga. We wrote the blueprint yes. to this gangster shit, nigga. We were some of the most gangsterous outside killing niggas, selling dope ass motherfuckers ever on the planet. Nigga. It had to so, start somewhere. Right, so I'm like, it had to start like, somewhere. Yeah, I'm like, why are you acting like you doing some new shit that motherfuckers ain't on, or you too old to know about, nigga? No, that's not the case. Like, the only the only difference is, is that you know niggas now just completely don't got no soul and no conscience now. You know they'll actually they'll actually shoot your grandma while she's trying to put her groceries in the house and shit, and they'll actually shoot the little baby uh, riding down the street on the bicycle and shit, and actually. Uh, do this and it, it, basically the shit that y'all was against doing that y'all probably wouldn't have did you know, or like that's too far we fuck that we like uh, we don't give fuck that. all that all you niggas can get it. I don't care who it is you know what I'm saying so I I think that might be the major the major difference it's it's almost like a deeper descent into the madness than it was and already and y'all was already in madness so right it's almost like going into a deeper level of hell than you already was in. Yeah. I uh and I always say that too. Like I in my conversations with some of my uh friends, 
I always say like the wildness of the youth and the lack of just how wild they is and how much gangster shit they be on and hood shit they be on. I be like, you know, it's our fault, right? It's it's yeah. our age group. It's our generation's fault because 1, we was out here wilding out on some gangster shit, on some hood shit. And then we had kids and most of us wasn't the happy Cosby family. It was some baby. I was like, we created the baby mama, baby daddy. We created that whole shit, our whole generation. It went from that to all the gangster shit that they was raised up around and saw us do. I'm like, nigga, it's our fault that these youths are so goddamn wild. I say that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. I don't I don't know. And I know that for, you know, a fact, just looking at it, you know, from my uh, standpoint of being younger, just going to school with motherfuckers like that. I saw that shit in what? Second, third grade. I was like, oh, you niggas are different. Yeah. The fuck yeah. is wrong with y'all? Yeah. I'm like, I don't. You know, just the shit they, they was doing and how they were talking all of a sudden, you know, and I took little bits of that because, you know, you want to kind of you want to still assimilate. You want to be you cool and you want to kind of be able to, you know, navigate around. But some shit, I was like, nigga. Yeah. Hundred percent. Damn. What the fuck? You know, when I was fucking uh, 20 and 21 years old, motherfuckers, I didn't been in their house and they two-year-old, three-year-old kid is in there as we're smoking, as there are guns on the table, as there's dope on the table. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. You was raised in that shit. Like, yeah, yeah, facts. And then it just keep getting worse. But then, you know, the the lesser version of that keep on, they keep on race. So, you know, you got a, you got 17, 18 year olds already doing that shit. Then they have some kids and then they not even that old. So it, it, it don't, I don't know. Shit don't even get a chance to progress. We don't get the life script on our no. side of the tracks. We don't get to follow that same ass regular life script. Yeah. You know, you if you got a grandma who 30 between 36 and 45, goddamn. Right. That should not be you, you that 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 tell you everything you need to know right there. Like shit. My grandma is 42 years old. <laughs> right. And she, and and I really and, but really it should be like I'm 16, 17 years old and my mama is 42 years old or some shit like that. Right. And then we go on like that. Shit. You know, you got a grandma already 50 years old. Fuck. Nigga. I, I What's know, been going on? I know plenty of grandmothers from the ages of 37 to 43, nigga. Easy. Yeah. That, <laughs> and I'm just like, what the hell? What the hell are we doing? Yeah. Period. At all. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh, getting back to this. So this right here, uh, one of the most gangsterous groups ever. Some of the most hoodest, hardest, killingest shit you will ever hear in your life on wax I, I it might be a stretch to say this but man I almost even put them up there with with NWA to a certain extent it, it kind of even go. it kind of might even personally touched me more they didn't have the reach or the influence of NWA because they from the Midwest NWA had Dre, they had the whole West Coast and the whole gangster movement. But yeah. Top Authority from Flint, Michigan, something to blaze to. They had another project, Rated R. I think they had like maybe one or two more. But I'm telling you, some of the hardest shit you will ever hear in your life. I'm talking about every song. Like they had a couple of songs in there, kind of on some... Yeah, this is, you know, how it is in the hood and we need to try to, you know, make things better, blah, blah, blah. He had a, they had a few of them songs in there, but most but overall, yeah, I'm talking about hardcore. Like <laughs> you put that on, boy, a nigga bet a nigga bet not talk crazy to you. After you listen to some top authority, nigga, I wish nigga, I will. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. The, yeah, yeah, that that when you say that, that all that remind me is uh, uh for me from younger viewers that uh, equate that to Lil John in the club and a bit a nigga better not say nothing to you after you even listen to this Lil John, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, so yeah, I, I've never I've never heard of uh that's my first time hearing of them, but uh, yeah, yeah, it, but at the same time, it you know after a while when it comes to that particular type of music 
when you didn't heard it from the the top heavy hitters, when you didn't heard it from the NWA and the Ghetto Boys, and you know you didn't heard a couple of guys, you know, um, you know your Scarfaces individually, or you didn't, you know, anybody that you can listen to, uh, whether it's from the east, north, southwest, um, you you can pretty much kind of heard it all. Now and but I, I think it's to varying degrees though. Mm -hmm. So it's like you know you listen to you you know your NWA is probably your your name brand lays, and then you got these you know you got the top authority them niggas probably is Mike Sales or something like that. And they all good in they own in they own way, but you know you know damn well niggas know the lays more so than the Mike Sales chips. But at the same time they all chips. <laughs> you know you're not really missing out on one. <laughs> On the other, like you, you be straight either way. You you can snack on either one, you know. So I feel like when you get to that, it kind of come down to that preference, you know. Is it then that's when you gotta start looking at the little shit, you know. Oh well, you know how these niggas present themselves, or all the, you know, how consistent are these niggas? Do these niggas put out more than these other niggas over here, or something like that? So that's kind of when you start getting to that, you gotta differentiate the two, because that's what I'm starting to notice with the theme of that is. You uh you broke that down uh perfect. I hundred percent agree with that exactly. Uh NWA was the lays everybody knows about. They got commercials and shit. Yeah, you know, they they the mainstream chip, but like you said, exactly top authority, they good too. They was the uh the Mike Sales or the Vidners, they was fire too. That's that's definitely they they are definitely like Midwest um hardcore rap legends and you know through the midwest they was uh crazy michigan they oh my god you can go there right now they they had a matter of fact they had a show maybe shit last year maybe a year or two ago you know obviously mm. they older now but right. um yeah motherfuckers was still going crazy damn yeah yeah they was but that's crazy. that hometown love too that's probably yeah. that hometown love too yeah and that that might be that might be a future uh idea too uh, the idea of um do do rappers do they really get more love slash hate where they from versus anywhere else or mm -hmm. you know you know because i feel yeah. like you can be true on both sides i feel like you can get more love from where you from than anywhere else and you can also get more hate from where you from than anywhere else that'll definitely be a, a good segment to do um that's that's some real shit. Uh, right off the top of my head, real quick. For example, uh, little brother and Ninth Wonder. They talk about that all the time, cause they in North Carolina in the South, but you know they doing some quote unquote, you know, hip hop backpacker New York kind of hip hop. You know how little brother. Right. Yeah. Exactly. They, they got a right. good mixture, but initially, especially when they first came out, you know that was that. That raw ass, they was doing like some, you know, some Nas tribe called Quest type shit. It, but yeah, because when I first introduced little, when you first introduced me to little brother shit, when you first introduced him to me, then you like, oh yeah, they from North Carolina, and I said, these niggas right here, right? These these niggas from, they don't sound nothing like okay, nothing. Versus exactly. like if you put one when you showed me. Like when you showed me more outcasts that I knew about, and then it's like, and and then when I heard all the other shit that they had put out, I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, you can clearly see in in here that these niggas is from the south, versus some little brother. Them niggas don't sound nothing. I don't hear no accent in their voice or nothing. Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, ain't got no bass in their beats. Nothing. No. Same with uh, who else was talking about that? Uh, ASAP Rocky, ASAP Mob was talking about that. He was like. Niggas thought we was from Memphis when we first came yeah. out all day. They mm -hmm. was like, no, nigga, we Harlem, New York. They was like, niggas, he said everybody thought they was from Memphis. Yeah, for sure. Or or what I heard was uh Houston. Either that, either that Memphis too. or Houston. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, yeah. Yeah, because you know they sound wasn't shit like no New York shit at all. But it's like they it's almost like that's what you had to do though. Because mm -hmm. if you just come out and you just another New York sounding nigga with another New York flow, well, well shit, nigga, we got plenty of that. Definitely. Uh, so my next choice, some more gangster shit. Now this particular group right here, I want to go search for these niggas. They they another one dropped maybe an album or two, 
and was super dope and gangster with it and just you never saw him or heard from him again you like what happened so this group right here a g to a key okay uh once again some more mia west well they 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 from minnesota milwaukee minnesota they were signed to uh rap a lot but with uh you know scarface uh jay prince all that they were signed to rap a lot and they were signed to rap a lot not saying much respect to jay prince and rap a lot but i'm just saying they were signed to rap a lot when rap a lot was the shit when scarface was the shit you know what i mean at the right. high day out of day thing so we like oh they about to go up they got songs with scarface they they subject matter they sound goes perfectly with the rap a lot brand and they dropped this classic ass dope ass album meal ticket and we never heard from them again we like what the fuck is that like yeah but let me play this there's some another clip of some the hardest shit you ever heard Some of the hardest shit ever. That particular song was called Cocaine. First of all, did you even hear it had sound out? Nigga running from the police from the ghetto bird. That shit was out. What is it? It's too much shit. Right. Um, and, and did you hear how wicked the fucking intro was? You had Oh, um, yes. Some old. Yes. Yeah. But, but our, our shit already took me. I was like, okay. I like this. Okay. Hey. What y'all doing? What we hey. doing, y'all? And that's just that's just the tip of the iceberg. That that so that particular song, Cocaine, that was like their uh kind of like the single. That was the song that they was most popular for. It was uh like it was on their album. I think it was on shit. It might have been on one of them Scarface compilation albums, yeah. like when he did the double disc my homie shit. My homie shit, yeah, yeah. It, I'm, I could be wrong, but that song might have been on there. But that's just the tip of the tip of the iceberg. The whole fucking project, super dope. That's not even the best song on the project. They are spitting their ass off, um, straight on some gangster shit. It, it's man, straight classic. Uh, I know. Like, it's, I, I know it's hard when you got me wanting to do the shit with you, with and I don't do none of that. Yeah, I don't. I don't. When you got me. When I don't, when you got me wanting to do criminal activity, and I and that's the <laughs> shit I'm scared, and I'm scared to do that before you, you know, before you came along. That's how I know you owned something, because that was just that that shit sounded dark. That sounded eerie. That was that was like some three six early three six shit or some brother Lynch type shit, but it's 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 somebody else. But you know, I I I like I like how that sounded. That I'm gonna have to check them out and see what's yeah. up with that. Cause you learn yeah. something new every day, and you know it's it's a it's a different kind of hard. It's it, it's that kind of make you, you know. When I first heard, I was like, "Fuck, nigga!" You know, I thought somebody was behind me or some shit. Like, and it's a wall behind me. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't even no. But I'm just like, you know, made me want to look around the room and shit. Somebody looking at me or some shit through the window or something. That yeah, that was kind of. Kind of creepy, but yeah, I like that. I yeah. like that. That that whole they whole style, his voice, they beats. They just had the whole package, man. I I I, I don't know. I, I may have to scour the internet, find them dudes. I, I would love see to what happened to them. Yeah, I would love to interview them. Like, what happened, bro? Like, where y'all? What happened? Shit. Yeah, yeah. I I I do believe that. Um, 
and that that might be another segment too just to you know just because i you said now for fucking forgetting shit but that just to be a good ass segment to talk about where it's like what happened to niggas that just you know what happened to this nigga or where did this nigga go or why did this nigga you know because when you because it, it actually surprised me when you look in it you you know sometimes you might not even want to look into it because you you might not like what you find you know because i looked into some shit about certain niggas i was into and this is it oh yeah he died from a heroin overdose uh three years ago mm. damn why even look this shit up mm. you know what i'm saying or some shit like because you never know what what the you know the case might be you know people be changing that changing religions and sure find a religion in the middle of shit or they get married or something like that or they just like well this shit ain't for me you know it ain't it ain't the money ain't coming the way i needed to or you know i just wasn't good enough to keep going you know you never know what and you only think it would be a reason or two why somebody can't keep going come to realize it's, it's millions of reasons why somebody can just stop rapping or you just don't hear from them no more yeah yeah should be going down but uh i would actually love to do that because it's so interesting you you get locked into these artists and you thinking like oh they about to be the next big thing and then just nothing happens and then you see you do you know your mind goes to you compare it to uh some of the motherfuckers that did make it through and you'd be like these motherfuckers made it through but this super talented motherfucker didn't it's just i'll give you a perfect example of that right now and I, my obviously my opinions on him have changed, but when I first heard this nigga Ross, I was like, "Oh yeah, you just one of them guys. You just one of them placeholders." Is what I called him back in the day, mm-hmm. like you know, eighth grade, you know, two thousand five. I'm like, you know, when he came out with the push it to the limit and the hustling, I was like, he might, he might can get another album just off of how big hustling got. I like, mm-hmm. he might can do another album, but I don't, I don't see him doing shit. And then look at this nigga now. All these years later, on a know, whole nother level, a whole nother level, boss, all kind of shit. But you couldn't have told me in 2005, 2006, when I first heard Push It to the Limit or Hustling, I was like, Yeah, this in 15 years, this nigga gonna be a force in the game. Like, nobody, you know, it, it, it's hard to gauge that though. Yeah, because you never know, you never know what, what some niggas is gonna do, you never know what other niggas ain't gonna do. Sometimes we be underestimating the niggas that we should be backing up and some of the niggas that we be backing up we might be like i don't know about you you know hmm. yeah it's yeah, just that, crazy how that works yeah uh i mean i i, I kind of ain't mad at you on that like don't get me wrong like when you came out with uh with hustling i, I was feeling that but oh yeah the, but the port of miami album i ain't gonna lie i, I didn't like really like port of miami the first album no not at all it was a couple no, songs I, I on there feeling it it was it, when it, it picked up with me with Trilla, he kind of had a couple songs on there, mm-hmm. but it was really that uh, deep in the rap is the one that that was like, okay, this nigga's here to stay. All right, this nigga's not going nowhere. I I am one hundred percent right there with you. So the second out, yeah, deeper than rap, that's the one that I was like, okay, Ross is the artist. The Ross is yeah, I was the same exact way. Yes, yeah, he just he he was like, okay, or he just learned enough. In his short time, and you're like, okay, I gotta get my shit together. I don't because some niggas you can kind of tell, like, yeah, I'm not giving this shit up. <laughs> mm-hmm, right. And I kind of I kind of felt like Ross when nigga, I'm here and I'm not going nowhere. I'm I done worked too hard to get here, and I'm you know, I ain't about to just kick me out after exactly. you know, after a couple songs and shit. I, I want to keep on living good and, <laughs> and having all the fine hoes. What you mean? Right. I don't want to I don't want a, a couple fine hoes and a couple hundred thousand, and I gotta go back to the pit bulls in the hood. No, I don't want to do that exactly so yeah it makes sense okay so i'm moving on to my next one uh so that right there first of all look look at that artwork that's just yeah, i don't know a hundred i know exactly what you're saying but it's like <laughs> yeah that's, that's, that's some creative shit. i when i first saw the artwork i loved i, I love the color scheme mm-hmm. i uh it pretty much looked like just I could be wrong, but it just looked like Tony Montana. It is. Yeah, it gotta be. Like if they told me anything different, I would be surprised. Yeah. But um, so this particular project right there, that's one I seem to like even people that are 
Griselda fans and listen to that kind of hip hop, they don't be knowing about this project right here. Um, and it's a to me. Uh, Let me guess. Can I guess? Can I guess? Can I guess? Before you say it, I'll go I ahead. Guess it is. Is, is, is Griselda? Yep. Is one of is one of the niggas? Yep. Is it Conway? Ah, uh, no. Damn it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, so this particular one is actually a joint album. So it's oh, okay. Benny the Butcher and 38 Special. Oh, okay. So the name of the album is Stabbed and Shot. So <laughs> yeah, Stabbed and Shot is the name of the album. So I uh came across this one. It came out in 2018. So I'm moving on like th these next couple ones I got. They're more, yeah. more newer, more updated. So this one came out 2018. I came across it, I want to say maybe like a year later, 2019. Might have been 2019 or at the top of the pandemic, 2020, something like that. But I was like, what is this shit? Like, right. I hadn't, you know, heard about, I know 38 Special, you know, he does the same kind of that grimy hip hop. He do the same kind of shit Grizel to do. Rock Marciano, they all work together, you know what I mean? But I did not know they did this joint project. And I'm just going through it. And I'm going, okay, I'm like, that song, though. Okay, I'm like, damn, that one cool. That one do cool. That one's, damn, the whole motherfucker is just dope. Like, right. y'all niggas did some shit with this one. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, 38 Special and Benny the Butcher, Stabbed and Shot is definitely on my list of underground unorthodox unpopular classic joints uh now this one the next one right here kind of jumping back a little bit this is now this one's definitely older now this is period uh i was kind of debating about putting this one on the list because it kind of falls in between because of ninth wonder you know what i mean it kind of falls in between it's still, I still look at it as, and it still is like a under, you know, unorthodox, unpopular classic album, but it kind of still spills over a little bit into the mainstream because of Ninth Wonder and they reach and how a lot of, a lot of, I see a lot of stuff with Ninth Wonder, a lot of stuff with Little Brother. They are kind of, they're getting, how can I say it? they're seeping a little bit more into the mainstream and people are getting more, a little bit more popular with them after the fact. I know a whole bunch of people that are just kind of really getting familiar with the shit they dropped years ago and just really getting into it. They like, Oh shit, little brother is the shit. So I was kind of debating, but I'm still going to add it to the list. But yeah, little brother, uh, the chilling circuit 1.5 period, hands downs, is one of my favorite hip hop albums ever. I think it's a perfect album from start to finish. There are no skips on here. I feel like they, this was like they, when they were super new and fresh and in the college dorm in, in North Carolina, just really trying to create some classic shit. It, it's, it's a beautiful piece of work, definitely. Chilling Circuit 1.5 by Lil Brother. I mean, it's perfect. Seriously. Uh, yeah, sure. Next joint is this one right here. I don't know if y'all know what that artwork is or not. Do you know what that artwork is? I, I know it's uh nigga, it's, it's J. Cole's uh J. Cole and Friends. Shit. There you go. There you go. It is J it's, 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 it's his friends. It's not yes. necessarily J it's, it's, it's he he on there a little bit, but it's mostly his friends. <laughs> right. So yeah, uh this is Dreamville. You know, that's J. Cole's collective, his his team. So it's J. Cole and Dream Bill, Revenge of the Dreamers 3. So they've had a few of those. Uh, they've been doing it for a while. This one was the best. First of all, it, it drew me in and intrigued me when I first heard about the project because just the creation process for me was completely different and how I feel a lot of niggas should do their music today. I think they would create better music. So their whole process was they locked in um, in Atlanta 
Tree Sound Studios. Um, I've been there. It's a legendary place. Some of your favorite songs, some of your favorite artists, some of some of the biggest selling artists in the world have performed there. So they locked in at Tree Sound Studios in Atlanta. This nigga sent out, J. Cole sent out invitations to local artists in Atlanta, to some mainstream artists that they wanted to fuck with. And obviously everybody didn't come, but a nice amount of people came. They locked in for 10 days and just had a whole bunch of different stu- they had you know they obviously there's a whole bunch of studio rooms in tree sounds so they just going from room to room this producer that producer this artist they locked in for 10 days and created to me this great ass project and you can just you can hear you can hear it in the project you can just hear the cohesiveness how how the vibe is just it's a whole i can almost can't really explain it it's just a different vibe versus you you can almost tell if you're a real connoisseur you can tell and listen to a song and be like okay this motherfucker was in houston and this nigga was in new york and this nigga uh recorded that shit in his room and emailed it to the nigga in houston and he on some copy and paste shit uh, on the beat you can really tell versus nigga i'm smoking a blunt this nigga smoking a blunt and we right here together and this producer making this dope ass beat and we high as hell and we right here together i'm vibing off you you vibing off me you throwing out shit you giving me ideas what to spit i'm giving you ideas that kind of cohesive creative process it don't happen enough like it used to in rap that's a lot of times how niggas could create these great songs now everything is so fucking uniform copy paste okay move this nigga verse to the beginning of the beat and okay there it is yes, and it's sir. like it work a little bit but a lot of times and, and that was a big part of this project for me i feel the production was super great flawless i feel the 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 vibe they had going was great it was it, it was almost like i felt like everybody was inspiring and challenging each other i heard some of the best vocal performances from all of these niggas in dreamville uh from you had niggas like from the west coast reason he he was a big part of the project uh kendrick was on there low as hell for the hook and shit out the blue we was like damn you think i got kendrick and just got him on the hook ain't that a bitch right and and that's when and then when they talk about it they say that's how it was they said a lot of niggas was just coming through because they just wanted to see what this really looked like, how how it felt in there. And he said that's how he got Kendrick. They just got Kendrick just for the hook because he feeling that shit so much. He just want to be part of the creative process. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just a little something. He said, "Let uh, me just get on here real quick." Yeah, but but <laughs> I mean, the project is just super dope to me. I mean, it had hella hits. You know, down bad. That shit was. They just had hella hits on here, and I was really uh, feeling it. It's definitely um, it's one of the newer ones came out a few years back, but it, I, I deem it a, a unpopular classic for sure. So that's uh, uh, that's pretty much it. I had I guess I'll throw in my honorable mentions. So my honorable mentions go to uh, once again on my gangster shit goes to see murder, life or death. That's the one. <laughs> That's the only C Murder project I ever I ever fucked with. Hey, man. At all. I couldn't fuck with nothing else, but this one here. <laughs> oh my God. Good I like that. I, I, I like it. I so think that. That's part of the reason why he got put in jail. <laughs> right. That's part of the reason why he got put in jail. Yeah, he probably shouldn't have killed that 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 young nigga for the you know for the other shit. But this album too. I, I'm pretty sure this album played a part in it. They probably yeah. play some of this shit in chords. Like, listen to this shit. Don't you hear right. it? Get them out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you say like that shit. That shit they doing with uh with Thug right now. Yeah, exactly. This shit in here out here inciting riots and this nigga doing this and doing no, no, we can't do that. Yeah, that's yeah. he murdered for sure. But that's an honorable mention. Another one is this one right here. Uh, Meek Meek Meek. Damn, I can't say this nigga name. Mick Jenkins, 
representing yeah. Chicago. He originally from down south. That nigga from like Mississippi or something, but he was pretty much like raised up in Chicago. So he pretty much represents Chicago. Uh Mick Jenkins, super underrated, super dope. The water is a truly an uh underground, unorthodox, unpopular classic album. Every song on there is super dope. His mm-hmm. bars are impeccable. The beats are just a a wavy, vibey ass sound. Um, the nigga came out. When was that? He had he had a single like a two years ago, one year ago. I think mm-hmm. it was called Scotty Pimp, and that nigga said that line, can't none of you niggas come for me but Kendrick. That's what he said. Can't none of y'all niggas come for me but Kendrick. Right. Putting it out there like lyrically, y'all niggas can't fuck with me. Except Kendrick, and I'm inclined to agree with that. I get, I give him probably you know ten percent more niggas than that, but at the same time, still that's not a lot of you know guys in the current landscape. And you know, I listened to you know that album. I, I listened to that album a couple years ago, mm-hmm. and I was like, yeah. And then uh, and then I've been a guy. I've been with him ever since, and yeah. I, I I'd have to I'd have to agree with that. Yeah, definitely yeah. have to agree with that. He's he's probably I'll I'll say that Mick Jenkins is probably one of the most he's probably outside of uh I can't even think of it right now, but well no, outside of Dash, uh outside of Dash, he Mick Jenkins is probably one of the uh best like artists I've ever stumbled upon slash didn't really mean to, but ended up listening to him anyway type of dudes you know it was one of my greatest discoveries on my own where ain't nobody had to tell me to listen to him ain't no uh article say hey check this guy out you didn't have to come to me like hey have you heard nobody told me i just on my own just found this dude and just listened to him yeah he he is one of them one of them guys oh yeah definitely and then my last honorable mention (laughs) you know what that is it's what a time to be alive man it's uh, it's the, it's the love, it's the lover boy, in uh, in the in the tox, Mister Toxicity himself. This project, I, I just it once again, unorthodox. It's a popular one. People love it. I haven't really heard nobody. I don't know why. Deem it a classic. Trash. But I know people love it. But it's you know that's why I kind of wasn't on my main list. I had to put it you know, as an honorable mention, but it's definitely a classic, unorthodox, unpopular, whatever you want to say, but it's definitely a classic. Like, the, it, no. it's them, it's, it's to me, it's almost both of them at their best. The beats are impeccable. It's now, really I'll, give no, that. I'll give you that, 1,000%. Yeah, it's no skips. And once again, I, I, I love to include, when I do these lists or whatever, uh replay value to it means a lot to me Mm -hmm. it's some shit that i love it or i like it and i might get a little tired of it i'd be like yeah i fuck with it but okay i ain't trying to hear it right now or i I just don't want to hear it right now this that never really happens you can play that shit right now i heard this shit a thousand times i never get tired of it it's just yeah it's it's one song on that album that I not not entirely, but just it's one song on that album that I feel what you're saying. I feel that way um, to you, and it it would be that uh, I'm the plug. I don't. I just that the beat, the way these niggas came at you on the song. You know, it just they both played into their strengths. They didn't, you know. It, I don't know it, it, that. If the rest of the album could have been like that in like maybe a song or two, yeah, I, I I would wholeheartedly see where he was coming from. But me personally, I can't get with that one. They they both individually, and that's another thing. I'm like, well, damn, why that's the only album or whatever project y'all did strictly together? But just as as separate artists, they both are. I felt like they were capable of so much more, and I feel like some of the laziness that you was talking about earlier kicked in with this album i really mm-hmm. do i think a lot of it you know a lot of you know like i, I remember the jump man niggas was losing their mind off of that shit. and i remember i was in the club one time and it came on and niggas exploded and i said what the hell are you niggas doing i said what y'all doing 
This, you know, it's like it's like it's a it's a favorite quote from my show that I watch, and, and it's like you can't you can't boo me because I seen what makes y'all cheer. So mm. once when so when when I see what makes y'all cheer, y'all booze mean nothing to me because it don't take shit to make y'all cheer. Because I'm like, if y'all want to hear this, then this making the club go up. I I, I lost faith in that. I, I lost faith in the club that night. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was like, yeah, we're this ain't where I need to be at no more. If this is what the fuck is is getting us there, some damn jump, man. I, I it was real repetitive. The hook was uh, the beat was uh, it was just real elementary, real. Let's just throw some shit together real quick. I, they they still gonna love it. I feel like that's one of them songs they was talking shit like this shit trash. They still gonna love. Watch these niggas still love this shit when we put it out. You know, I felt like that whole album was a cash grab. I really do. I, I felt like it was a big ass cash grab. And I ain't gonna. And lie. they and they got a lot of cash from it too. Oh, definitely. And I I didn't I didn't like Jumpman when I first heard it. Now I do. I still don't. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I fuck with still that. don't. I, I I can see why they was going up in the club. I I, I like it now. I I get it. Uh, uh, the first uh, time yeah. I heard uh, Diamonds Dancing, that shit blew my mind. If you just, I, I I got to the point where I would just listen to that beat, like I would block out both of their singing flows, everything, and just actually you listen to that beat. That beat is man insane that shit is special <laughs> right okay Man. i do i do i do like the beat but like the, yeah. the melodies that they coming with and, and trying to what they was trying to do on the song i'm like y'all could have did something else better it was just a whole bunch of misplacement i thought it was a lot of misplacement i thought it was a lot of i thought it was a lot of doing too much i thought it was a lot of not doing enough i thought it was a lot of half ass it's just so many problems i had with that album you know for the the hype that was behind it because I no don't I don't want people to get it misconstrued as listening to this because in 2015 when this shit came out or was about to come out I was hype as fuck when this shit came out because I love Drake and I love Future I love both of them niggas but we see but they both got this tendency to half ass by themselves so both of these half ass niggas at times get together on one project yeah i knew some half assness was gonna come out i just didn't think it was gonna be to the degree that it was i was i was disappointed i was waiting for another one to see if they could redeem themselves they still ain't did it they must have knew the shit was trash mm. crazy that's that, that's just me that's just me though folks yeah hey it's all opinions i i i give it to the classic i i fuck with it i man that replay value is crazy oh yeah uh, definitely all right, so yeah, man, it's time to uh, shit move I'll throw y'all, I'll throw, I'll throw y'all, I'll throw, I'll throw y'all a couple of mine, man. I, I ain't gonna keep y'all too long. I just so, want to uh, share what I got. So with this one, matter of fact, let me get this out the way first. Uh, oh yes, I'm gonna start with this one for you. Living off borrowed time, the clock tick faster. That'll be the hour they knock the slick blaster. Dick dastardly and muttly with sick laughter. A gunfight and they come to cut the mix master. I C E cold, nice to be old. Why two G S D twice to threefold? He sold scrolls low and behold. Know who's the illest ever? Like the greatest story told. Keep your glory gold and glitter. For half half of his niggas to take him out the picture. The other half is rich and it don't mean shit to villain. A mixture between both with a twist of liquor. Chain. Mm, 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 mm. Yep. So mm. I'm gonna start that off. Uh, rest in peace to Doom, man. Uh, that was sad. Uh, it's so sad. Is he really dead, man? Damn. Yeah, it's, it's almost it's almost like he's just doing that to play into the damn super villain persona that he got. Right. <laughs> you know, and and he really skeletor. He really gonna just appear back on niggas. You know what I'm right. saying? Ah, nigga, I was never gone. It was right. all part of my plan, head ass. New exactly. Album, you know. Shit. But um, but no, nah, that that just y'all heard that shit. What Man. about that? Shit? What the hell was that? Mm. I'm gonna tell you what it was. It was fucking great. It was great, and it's gonna forever be great. Um, because that's one of the best albums I've heard. Period. Fuck hip hop. Just 
of, of music. That's some of the best music I've ever heard in my life. I don't know, and I don't think I ever will know another nigga that is capable of spitting the way that MF Doom was able to spit. I mean, just damn it, one of what he could, one of a kind. He was one of one, but just the way. But it, he was one of one in so many different ways. Usually, you just one of one period but no he was one of one in different just the way he could fit so many words into a bar that probably shouldn't have fit or just how he can spit on a, a beat that ain't you know ain't got no business being spit on it just it just sound like you know some tv commercial shit or some shit for a cartoon or or whatever what i don't know what the hell it was but yeah just just uh just some of the songs i heard on the album uh money folder or um uh, you know, um, damn, what's what's my one? It's it's so many it's so many damn songs on there. The rhinestone cowboy and the and the strange clown and the like. We said, well, he just played accordion. Um, it he they changed music with this. I don't really. They really did change music with this. You you know, most people who you don't even think would listen to this album or have listened to this album, they will list shit like this as as an influence. They're like, oh, this album influenced me. Oh, Doom influenced me. Oh, you know, Mad Lib, the way, and again, this is Mad Lib from earlier with the champion sound. This is him with an actual rapper instead of another producer. But yeah, everything, everything about this album, it, it's like you can't, you can't be closed-minded and listen to Mad Villain. You can't be stubborn and listen to Mad Villain. You have to be fluid. You have to be able to really rearrange what you think you know and what you think you feel about music to be able to vibe with something like this because other than that it's just not gonna work it's just not gonna work um and and just it's it really has it's, it stood the test of time i mean rolling stone has had this on their greatest list i think i think this album might be on a uh top 500 albums ever list i have to double check that I, i'm not saying quote me on that but that alone says, speaks values right there. You got fucking Rolling Stone acknowledging your hip hop album. They don't really acknowledge a whole lot of hip hop. They do acknowledge it, but not a whole lot. So for them to, when they do pick and choose to acknowledge it, and you one of the people or you know factions or what or albums that they choose to pick, that's a that's a big deal. You know, and like I said, Adult Swim, he's another guy with mad lib where they was like yeah you're everything that you doing everything about you um it just flows with what we're trying to do so when you got major networks and you have uh major publications in the industry as long as other major players in the industry who see you as a you know they re they refer to you with reverence and they refer to you with um kind of just this air of mystique and air of you know he's 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 we we mess with him but we don't even really know what he is we don't know who he is you know kind of what he does and you're kind of just cool where you're at and then you got all these other people who's way above you kind of like oh my god this nigga is whatever I, I i feel like you didn't you didn't did what you needed to do and yeah that that's this album will always be a classic um it'll be unorthodox and it'll also be a classic so it'll always be both of those the the epitome of uh unorthodox um Fucking Mad Lib, MF Doom, like, I mean, just true artists, like, going out of your way to push the envelope, going out of your way to be creative and different, going out of your way to make sure motherfucker nobody is going to sound like me. Nobody. Nobody's yeah. going to rap like me. Nobody's going to create these kind of beats ever. Like, just... Yeah. yeah, and I don't, and 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 I, I'm I'm thankful for it because I don't I don't think nobody else could replicate it. No, I don't. Can't. I don't think nobody nobody can replicate it. It's, mm -hmm. it's it is what it is, and you know if you try to do it, you just come out looking the way that it probably would have looked if it was anybody else doing it. Stupid. And okay. what the hell are you? What are you doing? No, don't do that. So, yeah, that that that's the one which I think. um it would lead me into my next one that I would talk about, and that would that one would be Jesus from Kanye. Mm. Now, 
Yeah, you know, I know about that. I know, I know, <laughs> I know that the I know that for a lot of folks, the Jesus is I don't know. A lot of people just think Jesus is a train wreck. I don't believe that. I I from the beginning, it, it was kind of one of those things. I, Jesus scared me at first because I wasn't ready for Jesus. I wasn't I wasn't open to Jesus. You know, I I didn't want my Kanye like that. You know, that, that that's the best way I can say it. I actually thought that um, for people who don't know about me, Kanye has always been one of my favorite rappers. Um, and I always knew from college dropout and then he did late registration, then he did graduation, then he did 808s. And I, I started thinking to myself, I said, these are this is some great fucking music. Even in the, in the Twisted Fantasy, even with that too, that shit was fucking great. That's his best album. But I, I, I saw him coming out with all those. And I started thinking to myself, I said, man, this nigga really has just, he been rolling out the hits. <laughs> Damn. Nobody can just do this forever. It just don't, you know, it, it, he going to have to put some bullshit out or some or something that ain't <laughs> it, it ain't as great, you know, because no, nobody's perfect. That's how I look at it. nobody's perfect. So he gonna have to he gonna have to miss he gonna have to slip up he gonna have to do something. And as I'm just going along, man, this damn Jesus came out, and I thought I, it came out. And I heard it. I said, "Damn it, this is it. This is the one. This that shit I I thought was gonna come." And no, the fuck it was not. I listened to that shit, and the more is the more I listened to it, the more I liked it, and the more I liked it, the more I bumped it, and the more I bumped it, the more. I was just screaming that shit at anybody who would listen to me. You know, I, I I was like the one guy who, you know, it was like wrestling. I was the one nigga trying to tell you niggas that wrestling was still real when, when it come to Jesus. <laughs> because you wasn't finna tell me that this shit was trash. Like, I probably got over it being like, I, I'm like, oh, this shit. I don't know. I think this might be trash. I got over that in like an hour. At like an hour? No, this shit is and still to this day, that might be. I I don't know. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta because I don't want to get kicked off the podcast. So I gotta make sure. <laughs> I, so I gotta make sure I place the album properly. I don't know if I want to put it in my top three. Drew, whether you like it or not, get the, get over it. Uh, it's gonna be. In, it's either gonna be in the top five or top three Kanye kind of albums for me. Get over it. It's, that's how it is. That's how this works. It's, 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 it's got to be just because you don't understand the genius. You might understand the genius of it 10 years from now, maybe. But you you got to you got to understand the genius of it. It is it, just like Mad Villainy. It was just, the whole album shouldn't have worked. Mm. It just it yeah. just it wasn't supposed to work. And I feel like to the you know, to most people, it probably didn't work. But I but I think that that's because. We're so used to Kanye being so uniform in a good way and him pushing the boundaries in such in a comfortable way, in a right. way that that makes you feel like, OK, you can see what he's trying to do. You can kind of get with it. Like you can recognize some of the stuff when this when I started looking into this album and looking into the credits and his thought process. And this nigga was was fucking with Daft Punk and was the house music and techno and. You know, he was just watching certain, you know, different movies and shit like that. That kind of went with the flow. And then I realized, too, like, this is Kanye's like mad on this album. The more I listen, I'm like, he he sounds really mad. He sounds really angry, real pissed off about something. And that kind of drew into the whole. You know, that kind of drew me in because I'm like that. that That's what I get. I get that kind of it was like hype Kanye, but I'm like, I'm not used to him being hype like this. I'm not used to him mm -hmm. kind of trying to bring that hard edge in his music. And he did it just enough to where it's it's still Kanye, but it's not. He's not trying to pretend to be somebody else or he's trying to pretend to be something he's not. He was just basically just operating in that same funky ass uh, energy we see him with nowadays. Yeah. That, that was it. That was kind of just more the beginning stages of it. But I think over time that that, you know, just like how graduation got bumped down in favor of Twisted Fantasy, um, in my mind, I think in a lot of people's mind, that Jesus, I think it'll change people's minds. I don't I don't know when that 
day will come or it, hell, it might not even ever come. But it needs to be said that Yeezus is a is a top tier Kanye album. It is a top tier uh, album for hip hop period. And I, I think it's I think it's an achievement. And I think that it's misunderstood. And this is a part of it is a part of why I believe that, because it's so misunderstood. And I've heard so many people that as many just like you who have said all oh, that shit trash it's weak it's this it's that i've heard just as many people say that's some of the best shit he's ever done that's i don't i don't think he can come you know close to that after a couple albums you know or anything like that i've heard people just as many people sing it it's praises then they have try to you know say that it's trash or it's garbage or get it out of here so jesus so, jesus is will definitely be a top tier album for me so I'll say this, like, yeah, I I can't say it's trash. So this was my experience with it. So when I first heard it, I was just like, I couldn't digest it because like you said, we hadn't been used to any of those kind of sounds from Kanye. So I couldn't digest it at all. So then I had to go back to it. Then I went back to it. I was like, okay, I don't like it. Then I went back to it and then shit like, black skin heads, new slaves, blood on the leaves, shit like that. Okay, the message and the shit he was talking, it grabbed me like, okay, damn, he on some militant kind of fuck y'all type shit, fuck the system type shit. So that kind of appealed to me. Then I went back to it and I'm like, okay, it's kind of cool, but I just still can't. I just had to get to the point where, and one day I may like it, like you said, I had to get to the point where it's not trash, it's okay, but I respect the message and I respect what he did artistically. You know what I'm saying? I do respect the album. I just still can't just, oh yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's where I'm yeah. at. It's it's a couple songs right now. Like I can throw the shit on and I'll be I'll be fine. You know, like like I know for it, for instance, like the intro, that shit, you, you know, that shit. Cause at first I was like, what the what the hell? Can mm -hmm. I, I said that, I, I had to double check what I was playing. I said, is this? I had to adjust my glasses. This ain't Kanye, is it? What is this? You know, and then and then it just was, and I was like. Okay, all right, nigga. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you, because at that point he had earned enough goodwill for me at least. So I'm okay. All right, nigga. I'm gonna at least hear you out. I'm gonna at least play your album out one time, mm. if nothing else. I'm gonna give you that one album playthrough to see what you're talking about. Right. And this nigga, he he had a way of bringing me around to his way of reasoning, his 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 way of thought. Because I was like, oh, this is pretty damn good here. What you got going on? Pretty damn yeah. good. What you got going on here? So. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, well, but next, of, I'm gonna uh, go ahead, go throw ahead. this out here. So we uh talking about yay. I might as well go on and throw this in there. First, <laughs> uh, 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 she wanna have whatever she like. She can if she bring her friend, and we can have one hell of a night through the day. Hey, I mean, stand like a group because you gotta be. Bro. I mean, you probably might be saying you ain't jogging either, but man, old girl got a fat old ass. To make each other bitch just dance And fuck the mother niggas cause you down for her bitches Fuck the mother niggas cause she down for the sticking And fuck the mother niggas so she down for some licking And fuck the mother bitches cause she down for the chicken love Yep, Kid Cuddy That boy Cuddy It's just, um, it's sad that they He, he just uh, said what he said about Kanye or whatever How, you know, they don't deal with each other and all this other stuff I said, man, what should y'all niggas be doing to each other in this damn industry, man? I kind of like I heard that, but like, do you know like why? Is it, was it business or personal? It was, or? It, uh, from what I, my understanding is, from what I've read, it sounds like it's a mix between both. Mm. But at the same time, you know, hell, Kid Cudi and Kanye, they both weird as hell, and they both yeah. extra. You know what I'm saying? So when you you got two niggas who both weird as hell and they both extra as fuck, like. <laughs> It, is it it is it either they fault shit you know is it because you you can never tell it's, it's so much you know any any you know anyway but um yeah man on the moon this 
I think this was kind of one of my outside of Mad Villainy. This was kind of my, you know, one of those first albums that was strictly on some experimentation kind of let's see what we can do with this hip hop, you know, outside of it just being hip hop, like the song he just played, like the poker face. That kind of got me into it. I was like, okay, yeah, all right, you know. But really, what what really did it for me, and even still to this day, that that damn day and night, Lord have mercy. That that is one of the that is a all time that is a, a all time smoke song. That is an all time sit up and think song. That's a uh listening to it uh, all time listening to it in the middle of a night song um so many emotions just flow through your mind and in and, and flow through your heart when you listening to you know stuff like that and you know it, 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 i got to see you know what he was trying to do and then you kind of got to see a little bit of the the experimental uh side of kanye because this is you know he had he was heavily involved with the production of the album so you got to hear a lot of the different songs that were on there, like the you know, Pursuit of Happiness was a was a song on there that was pretty good. And it, I didn't like it at first, but I, I listened to it a little bit more. And it kind of challenged me to, you know, when I say that I, you know, tell myself I like music, that it challenged that, you know, is it, do I really like music or do I like, you know, what I perceive I think is good music or something like that, or is it just good music, good music. And, um, I think that it kind of, it went a long way in showing me like, hey, it is a, it's definitely more to this hip hop thing than just you know like I say, just a certain set of sounds, and a certain set of keys or a certain set of hi hats or a certain set of subject matter or lyrics that you just got to talk about in order to either make a great album or to make a marketable album or make something that sells because it did all those three things. It was marketable, it sold, and it sounded good. Um, I'm kind of, I, I don't necessarily call it a classic. I wouldn't necessarily call it that. You you got some folks out there that probably will do that. I would say that it was definitely a very solid to very good album. Um, it very unorthodox. It wasn't, it wasn't really nothing on there that was kind of just your run of the mill standard, you know, hip hop project. But this was kind of like the, it, I, I, it's almost like in a way, it's kind of like an acid rap before acid rap. It kind of opened the door for a chance to rapper or somebody like that who you know who kind of experimented with drugs and stuff like that in their personal time and then kind of experimented with their music at the same time as experimenting with the drugs to kind of come up with this whole new different flavor kind of different sound um i would kind of give this album the precursor to that definitely would do that um before i call it a classic but i definitely think it has some classic tracks on there um but all in all it was um yeah, I think that's kind of where it ends for me as far as Cuddy, because uh, the sequel to this damn album, I don't know what, I don't know what this man was doing. I don't know, uh, Mister Rager, Man on the Moon too. Um, <laughs> I just he was he was somewhere else on that album. He, you know, as far as I'm concerned, because I just remember listening to it, you know, um, especially back in school, messing with some of the white girls. And they, and you know, they did some of the white girls I deal, dealt with. They loved Cuddy. They loved Cuddy. It didn't matter what it was from, as long as it was him, it was great. And then the album had dropped, and I was just sitting there, you know, and I'm listening to it, um, and I'm just like, what, what is this? I, you know, and I didn't even know it was Cuddy at first. I had to reach over and and tap them. I'm like, you know, what is this? And they're like, oh, this is, you know, this uh, that new Cuddy. I said. The new Cuddy, what what is he doing? What the hell is all this? I mean, just some of the most off the wall, some of the most uh, saying that the album sounded like what I think goes on in the mental patient's brain. Mm -hmm. It was just a it was just a bunch of noise and a bunch of sound and a just a wall of text with the with the lyrics and shit. And I'm just like, yeah, this is not this is unorthodox in all this shit in the in the bad sense where it doesn't it doesn't do anything it doesn't push anything forward it doesn't try anything it's just yeah let's just do some shit simply for the sake of being different with no end result in mind mm. that, that's kind of what i get with that on the flip side of the damn cuddy so i think cuddy you know he can have his ups and downs 
but I think that might have a lot to do with his mental state because you know he he wasn't in the best mental health at points in his career. Yeah. So yeah, with Cuddy with me, uh I'll say overall Cuddy is just like not for me. Yeah. Uh, like when I first try like like I guess day and night it grew on me. Day and night was kind of like undeniable at a certain point. You know what I mean? It's just one yeah. of the undeniable songs. The shit, the beat is just yeah, it's just catchy. So it yeah, you know, that one was undeniable. But I just felt my my first impression, I just felt like he was too emo and too like just like you just doing music for white people type shit. That was my first impression. So then, you know, I, I heard some of the stuff he was doing with Pharrell, some of the stuff he did with Ye. So it was a couple here and there I like. Then just as of recent, maybe, maybe I guess earlier this year. Uh, so on Amazon Prime, they did like a, a documentary or he did his own documentary about him. And uh, if if you have Amazon Prime, definitely watch it. So it gave me a whole new perspective on him. Uh, he really was able to explain himself, explain the music, explain uh, why he did this and just his whole creative process. And, and I just got a different kind of respect for him because he has went through a lot and he does have a lot of mental issues. And yeah. And and it it definitely it comes out in the music. And then you know, on the documentary, they having people on there where like, yeah, Cuddy music helped me. Cuddy music got me through. Cuddy music kept me from killing myself. You know what I mean? So yeah, I gained a new Always respect. Heard that. Yeah, I I gained a new respect as far as that aspect. I also gained a new respect where I didn't know at the end of the day. Cuddy was pretty much the whole inspiration and the damn near the creative director when it came when it came to Kanye's uh 808s and Heartbreaks album. Really? A hundred percent. Like, so just to, just to give you an idea, Heartless is at the end of the day, Heartless, which was one of my favorite songs off there, uh that is Kid Cudi's song for the most part. Kid Cudi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. He yeah. performed that. that song before 808s and Heartbreaks even was thought of and came out. He 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 was on stage like oh in Hawaii or some fucking where uh, with Kanye and they was performing. And Cudi, they, you know, it's footage of him. He performed that song before we even knew a Heartless or anything or, or uh, Kanye's album. And then they were just talking about how involved with that album he was. And then you listen to it, it makes sense. That's right. straight up. That's uh that's his, his bag. Lane. That's, that's that his whole lane. album is Cuddy's bag, yeah. So for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. But he he just, you know, and he he I, I hope he is I hope he found peace, you know, because I just hope, you know, because I seen him doing the stuff with the uh you know, recently he been he been in dresses and stuff like that, and on the red carpet and shit. And you know, in this day and age, I you know I don't even want to speak negatively on that. You know, I just hope that you know he's <laughs> he's well. No, I'm just I'm serious though, because yeah, at I this know. point, you know, at this point, shit, they they trying to you know you can't say shit about nothing. You right. you can't you can't just say well I wouldn't wear the shit. And they all you gotta do is say well that shit you can't catch me wearing that. And all of a sudden, I hate I hate everybody who do that shit. I don't know why. But you know, I hope he found peace. Um, I hope he is happy where he is. Um, and I hope that he um I just I hope he's getting to where he he wants to be at because you know it, it's a lot of stuff to go through in the industry and in that life and everything, and then it's I'm pretty sure it's triple fold when you got a whole bunch of shit going on your in your head already mm -hmm. before you even get all that that the other stuff going on with that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh so sp speaking on uh mental health. I'm a fucking walking paradox. No I'm not. Threesomes with a fucking triceratops. 
reptar Rapping as I'm mocking deaf rock stars Wearing synthetic wigs made of Anwar's Dreadlocks, bedrocks Harder than a motherfucking Flintstone Making crack rocks out of pussy nigga fish bones <laughs> This nigga Jasper trying to get grown About five, seven of his bitches in my bedroom Swallow the cinnamon, I'ma scribble this shit and shit While Sid is telling me that she's been getting intimate with men Sid, shut the fuck up Here's the number to my therapist You tell shit. him all your problems, he's fucking awesome with listening <laughs> that guy right there. Yeah, that guy, man. Tyler, Tyler, the creator, man. The voice of a generation. <laughs> yes, seriously. Uh, yeah, the voice of a generation. He was the the whole odd future Wolfgang kill them all, whatever that shit was. Is everything about that was just a big fuck you to rap. <laughs> everything. How they moved, how they did everything, how they made their beats, how they wrapped their raps, how they put their projects together. It was all, all y'all, this right here, y'all can sit and spin. You don't like it. Well, we didn't care about none of this shit, no way. So what the hell ever? Oh, well, you know, all my shit trash. Oh, well, you all know, right. uh, you know, you don't fuck with my music. Oh, well, you know. And then, and then, and so many people my age back then, because you know that came out in 2011. So I say about 2009, 2010. You know, Earl Sweatshirt and uh, and Mellow Hype and Left Brain, all them niggas. Damo, which is my personal favorite out the whole group. Yeah. All them niggas. They, you know, they just said, "Screw all this. We gonna do it how the fuck we want to do it." And and ain't like we can, you know, they had the internet. They didn't have no no label backing. And all this shit. that's how they was able to do half of the shit they was able to do. Because it was just them and the internet and then uh, some various shit, a microphone or a beat machine or whatever the fuck they could get their hands on. And they just came up with shit. And like I, and like I said, when I listened to the Goblin album, because I, 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 at first when I heard the, the Yonkers, I was like, like, I kind of, I kind of got with it, but I was like, is he playing or is he for real? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it and then when I watched the video, I was like, he seems like he's real. I'm just I, I and then I was like, I guess this just must be his shtick. He just must be that, you know, he's just that white black nigga. I don't I'm 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 guessing that's just what he's gonna do. And then I listened to the album and I was like, I felt my I found myself liking it. But I felt like I was breaking some kind of rule or something. I, I felt like <laughs> I, I felt like I was letting niggas down or something by actually enjoying this shit. Cause I felt like I wasn't supposed to. It felt like yeah, it just felt like this is I'm doing some shit I really ain't got no business doing right now. Everybody knows when you're doing some shit you ain't got no business doing. Right. And it's just like, well, I'm doing it now. It's over with. I'm doing it now. Shit. And. I kind of listened to it and I was, and, and I ain't like every single thing on there, but I was like, he okay, he coming, he coming with it. And and then when I found out that he was he did majority of his own production, I said, wait, he making shit that sound like this, and it's it's him. I'm thinking he might have got some hitters or something, you know, because that was his, his label debut. Goblin was his major debut or whatever. I'm thinking he got some hitters on there. You know, he might have a boy wonder here or there, or he might have a you know, uh, uh, whoever was hot back in the like maybe Mike, no, I don't think Mike will have dealt with him, but he might have had a couple niggas on there that I would know. And I just realized, I'm like, like, I think if I, I think like most of the album, so I think like 10 or 11 tracks on the album was produced by this man. And I'm just like, damn, why you, how you not even been in the industry this long and you, you're able to just do so much. It was just like everything about the album like our game or our future just shouldn't have worked. It shouldn't have been something that should have been marketed. It shouldn't have been able to be something that people can get behind. And it shouldn't have been able to be able to kind of lift Tyler into this like low key superstar that he is now. Cause you know, when you listen to Tyler and you listen to this album, yeah, it's unorthodox and it's, it's unpopular and all that shit because then nobody want to work with him. I didn't know this. I didn't know that, he could have been on songs with uh, Rihanna and ASAP Rocky and, and labels were trying to get these people to come and do songs with him and, 
you know, be, you know, mess with them, you know, anything. And, and they were just like, ah, what they doing over there? That's kind of, that's kind of against what I'm doing. That, that might, people might see that and might think of me and think I'm weird like them until you realize, until they realize that, Hey, this weird shit works. I can get this weird shit off. Maybe not everybody, but this nigga can, and the niggas that he's with, they can get it off. Because they're, you know, they stay, that's just who they were. That's, the, you know, that was authentically them. And that, that was another thing I could get it because I had a weird aspect towards me. I had a uh, off the cuff slash uh, whatever the word is that y'all niggas want to use for weird nowadays to make it sound better. Um, quirky and shit like that. I, I could identify with that. And I think that a lot of people are more weird and quirky than they would like to admit. Oh, and yeah. so with that, and so with that, you got that as an undertone. It was only a matter of time before this shit that he was doing would just pop and bust. Because I think that a lot of people, you know, the people that we like to say is, oh, they're weird or they're out there or they this and that, they far out. We we're I think a lot of people are more like them kind of people than they would like to admit. It's just the stigma and everything that comes with that. And Tyler, he spoke about that a lot, about how the hurdles he had to go through because of, you know, goblin and, and just how he did things and how he went about shit and his mindset and how he saw things and how people couldn't understand that at first. At first, they 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 did understand it because he stayed true to himself in an industry where a lot of niggas don't even do that to begin with. So that was that was something that I didn't feel like I would like, and then I ended up liking. And then I thought I was doing something bad. I said, "Damn, I didn't." I said, I, I, "That was one thing." I was like, "I hope, I hope Soul Quest don't find out about this shit." Because <laughs> I said, "Because he gonna push me over," you know. No, I don't need that shit. Actually, so this is where I'm at with it. Like, so Tyler is he just starting to kind of get that undeniable respect in hip-hop you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. he just won the, uh, you know the grammy and shit so that then kind of solidified him put him on a whole nother level but i ain't gonna lie since day one i kind of always fucked with with the whole movement to me when i really think about it just him as an artist their movement the way that they branded everything it was just like a combination of like hip hop, it was a combination of weirdness. It was a common a combination of comedy, uh, and just a combination of we don't give a fuck, and it and it really worked. Like they branded them like Odd Future. They said it all in the name. Yes, motherfucker, we weird and we're odd and we're young and we the fucking future. And and then like you said, that took it up another level for me. When I found out that he's doing the production, are you doing your own production and you rapping and you doing this comedy shit? It's just like with, I think initially, uh, once again, white folks catapulted them to where they are today because mm -hmm. with us, unfortunately, so with the weird shit, the unorthodox shit, the against the grain shit at least in the recent years white folks just send, tend to uh gravitate to that shit before we do you know what i mean they love that shit versus, percent. but versus back in the day because motherfuckers just don't have open minds these days everybody is some follow the leader ass motherfuckers everybody it's just nobody has an open mind no more. Everybody just is, is microwave as fuck and just like the same sounding shit. Nobody is has an open mind anymore. I, I, I'll take it back. Think back to back in the day. So before you had an inside look into these artists, you could hear them and see them all the time and hear what they're thinking through the Internet and see what who they fucking and how they live in and what they yep. think before those times. Think about motherfuckers like uh, Bootsy Collins, George Clinton, and Parliament. Them motherfuckers was weird as fuck. They, they, yes. the shit they wore, 
the kind of music they was doing, the shit they was into, it was different, weird shit that you had never fucking seen before. But niggas, we fucked with it and they loved it. My mom mm-hmm. and them, uh, when I got uh, older or whatever, and you know, this is years later, they put me on to the album they was fucking with in high school. George Clinton, Boosie Collins, oh my God, they outfits and the shit they, oh, they, they loved it. Because mm-hmm. it was them being an artist, people appreciated the creativity. P- people appreciated the weirdness, and they making some dope ass, funky, classic shit. But right. motherfuckers ain't open minded like that no more. You know what I mean? I, I liken it to. Um, I think I, I don't need, and it, it's hard to say what uh, what they did it for, but I liken what um, I liken what our future slash Tyler kind of did. I, it's kind of like with the younger crowd, uh, well, I say your generation, y'all generation did for uh, MTV and and videos and shit like that back in the day where it was kind of just, it was kind of like off the back of, you know, one, you know, one or two kind of acts that kind of just pushed this new mindset kind of forward where, you know, MTV was kind of fueled by that kind of rocker slash kind of counterculture you know fuck the establishment uh you know let's just let's just chill you know fuck the you know fight the power and authority and all this other shit don't conform kind of shit and it's like our future kind of brought that back for the present day Mm -hmm. for the time period that they was in and i'll maybe maybe like that for the internet i don't know maybe it maybe the internet was the mtv for this time period but they you know they really did though I, i their influence was was uh it's died down it's definitely died down but they influenced i say from like 2010 to like 2015 yeah that, that them niggas was undeniable if he was white black mm-hmm. uh, latino i mean everybody was on it asian everybody was on it mm-hmm. i seen you everywhere you go you saw the upside down cross or you saw some shit that you know whatever the little uh insignias and shit like they had that you know associate themselves with them or, or the font that they use and all that it was just everywhere you couldn't deny it and it was all because of tyler because if any of them other niggas tried to come out as the maybe earl could have got it off I, I think earl could have got it off but other than that if it wasn't earl or uh tyler leading in charge i don't think the whole odd future shit would have took off the way that it did because no. you you had to have you had to have a nigga that didn't give a fuck to the specific point that tyler didn't give a fuck it's oh. like you thought you you thought you didn't give a fuck but tyler didn't give a fuck at all at all he he don't care you think i'm weird i, I talk shit like i might be bisexual i may not be bisexual he pushed all the envelopes nigga i don't give a fuck for real um and now he's gotten to the point where you know he's a little bit older now and i love the way he still be himself, but he combining like the weirdness with a little bit of the soul along with a little bit of the real hip hop shit. Mm-hmm. And it's really working for him. Like just alone as an MC, oh, he's gotten real good. The mm-hmm. album he just won this year for he won the uh the Grammy for, you know, the, the project he did with uh with DJ Drama is basically yeah. a Gangster Grills or whatever. Uh yeah. call me when you can, catch me when you can, whatever the fuck the name of it was. Right. Uh that project, oh, his flow, he barring out. He he is <laughs> some of the best uh flows I've heard from him. He like, nigga, I do this. Like I'm yeah, I, I'm on that weird shit and this, 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 but nigga, I do this. I, I I'm a rapping ass nigga. But meanwhile, I can't get shit from Domo since 2018, and I'm upset about that. Yeah, man, he's that guy. I fuck with Dom, man. I, I just, I just want to know why. Why is it always? This is just a sidebar from the today's topic. I just want to ask you and all the other listeners why. Why is it the niggas I fuck with? <laughs> why is it the niggas I appreciate and that I like that they? They only drop every three years. Why? Why is it? Why is this only happening to me? Mm. You see, because but see, if you if you you listen to uh fuck ass uh NBA Young Boy, you get some shit every other week. I don't like that. Got some bullshit. 
I just I've always felt some kind of way about that where it's like the niggas who I feel like should be dropping, 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 dropping. The only nigga that really give me that like I deserve is currency. And I, yeah. you know, I'm thankful I'm thankful to him for that. But it's like I want other niggas to damn it, do them. You know what I'm See, saying? I, I'm like I, I, all the smoking and drinking and bitches. All right. What got you that? The music, nigga. Do that. Do the music right. that got you the, the drugs and the liquor and the bitches. Do what got you all that first. Shit. You niggas ain't running out of money yet. You can't just keep playing the same shit all day, every day, can you? <laughs> Hell, you ain't Michael Jackson. You ain't built no certified catalog off of timeless hits. Shit. See, and, and I think so. I see both perspectives. I'm, I've been in both shoes. I see both perspectives. I see it from the being the fan that I am to the to the artist perspective or the label. Uh, I think a lot of it be so. Yes, mo- in, in the in the internet times that we in, yeah, that's just kind of like the what most motherfuckers do. They dropping music all the time to try to stay relevant keep their fans but they dropping music all the time all the time all the time and that's a good slash bad thing because for the fans yeah it's cool but then it gets to a point like okay motherfucker damn okay like perfect example like how we talked about currency i love currency i fuck with currency but he drops so much music as I'm going I through so. the new releases on Friday and I see he got some new shit, I ain't going to lie. I don't go right to it. And you know why it's I don't go here. right to it? And I love Currency and I fuck with him because I'm already six projects behind right now. <laughs> nigga, I ain't listening to the shit you dropped in January yet, nigga. I got to I gotta listen to that. I got to catch the fuck up. So I'm not, e- I don't even want to go. <laughs> I-, I don't even want to go right to your new shit already, nigga. Because I'm, <laughs> Lord, I'm mercy. you know what I mean? So it's like, it has a good side and a bad side. <laughs> yeah, that, that, and the, every single time, that's what it is. I said, I said, damn, I like, wouldn't it came out today. Yeah. Currency and currency and dropped some more shit. And I ain't listened to the last eight heating did. God right. damn. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, it's a good and a bad thing because it it, it it has you, when you constant, constant, it can create your biggest fan to become a little bit disinterested and not as persistent with Or they can take you for granted. Fan. They can take you for granted. Yeah. Oh, he, oh, he already dropping shit. He'll drop some more shit. Versus if you drop every three years, <laughs> oh, when that, when that motherfucker drop, oh, I'm on it. I can't wait to hear it. I'm breaking my neck to fucking hear it. You know, like what I Kendrick, mean? like Kendrick Punk ass did. Ken, sorry, they sorry, was, Kendrick. Oh, man, Kendrick, they was talking about that. They said all these artists, when you with a label, how much you got to spend on a budget for marketing and, and promoting when you about to drop a new album. They said, not this nigga. This nigga didn't have mm-hmm. to do no promotion, no marketing, no nothing. It's Kendrick. Yeah. It's I drop a, a little punk ass video and it got 20 million views in 24 hours. Nigga, I ain't got to do no more marketing. Whatever. Especially, especially if I heard if what I heard is to be true. I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently th- this whole album that we hear now, this shit been done for like two, three years now. Like he was apparently he was supposed to drop the shit for the pandemic started. Then the pandemic started and fucked everything up. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. I got now, this. We got to do something else. I don't know if that's true or not. Yeah, I don't know how true that is because once you listen to it fully, you'll see like uh, some of the stuff he's saying is kind of real current. And then right. he even he even say he can on certain lines. He speaks to why it took so long. How for he say like for two three years he wasn't even really inspired like that. He was like y'all niggas wasn't inspiring me to do shit. You know what I mean? So I don't know how true that is, but uh shit. I, I told uh somebody said that to me yesterday. They was like, I can't believe somebody said uh I can't believe Kendrick had writer's block for uh two, three years. I said, nigga, did you not listen to fear at all? You just didn't listen to that song at all, did you? Right. I, that that whole song kind of you know, I, I kind of I said because I remember that I was like, what if this nigga don't drop for like a minute? Cause this sounds like like he like he gave everything what he had left to finish this classic shit out. 
Mm -hmm. You know, and he might not be able to do no shit because he can't. He probably can't think. He probably used the last of his creativity at the time to finish down. Yeah. Yeah. Kendrick, he's all about uh, the line he say on, on the new joint. Nigga, I'm not in the music business. I'm in the human business. That just sums him up to a whole. This nigga's out here living life. He he don't he ain't flooding you on social media. He right. not look what I'm doing today. Look where I'm going. Look what I'm eating. Look who I'm fucking. Kendrick is not about none of that shit. No, Kendrick is living his life, enjoying his money. We they was talking about that how, like on the album cover, he's holding his. Uh, he got his wife. We don't even know if that's his wife or fiance. That's yeah, how yeah, yeah. he is. So he got the wife on the bed with the baby, and then he got. You know, he holding his two year old uh, daughter. Nick and snuck and had a whole nother one. He didn't even, nobody even knew he had a brand new daughter for the last two years. Nobody knew it at all. Kendrick lives a private life. And he that's how it should be. Life. Shit. And that's yeah. how it should be. And, and it's just another sidebar. It just, and that's why, you know, my personal social media is like, I'm not, I'm not into all that. You know what I'm saying? Like that. I don't want you to just know every single thing I'm doing. And, you know, that just that don't I just look at people. They don't seem weird to you. You know, a motherfucker at any moment, they could probably know where you are at any given time. They can find you. They can they know what you did last summer and shit and blah, blah, blah. You know, I I just seem kind of weird to me that a motherfucker can just know every single thing that I'm doing, you Let's know, see. In 2022, it's not look look at Facebook and Instagram numbers. A billion people, so you you can't you can't tell nobody that that's weird. It'd be like, what are you talking about? This is how we live life now. What do you mean? Like, uh, it, it, you, you so you don't want to document all 185 things you do in your day? No, nigga, yeah. I'm trying to do what I want to do. Shit, do you know? I just think how much time does how time consuming is that is. So you do some shit. So you work out for 30 minutes. Or no, you work out for an hour, but then you stay in there for an extra 15 minutes so you can record yourself working out so people exactly. know you work. I got to show y'all niggas. Look at me. I'm working out. Uh, check this out. Hey, this is what I'm about to eat for lunch. Now I'm eating my lunch. Look at how good this shit looks. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm just now, like. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, brother, I guess. <laughs> yeah. But we'll, guess we'll, we'll, but, but you, you definitely... I know we talked about that. You you gotta get it for the pie. No, 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 no. Definitely, I feel that. But I'm talking about on a personal level. Oh yeah. As far, yeah. As, as, far as my personal personal uh, life goes, I I just don't. You know, you don't give a fuck about me that much in real life. So why you why you care so much about digitally? No, yeah. That's how I look at. That's how I look at it. Oh yeah. You don't care that much in real life. Uh, motherfuckers are nosy and they want to see your shit. You know, like but but like with me, you look at my shit. Now, I ain't gonna lie, as a personality, I know that I kind of don't have a choice but to conform a bit. But you look at my shit, my shit is about the music, it's about the business, it's about the pod, it's about, cause I still look at social media and still pretty much use it for what it was originally designed for. It was designed to Network with people, mm -hmm. catch up with yep. people, promote yep. what you have going on and business and shit like that. So I right. still have that mentality. Now, every once in a while, I'll sprinkle in some little shit to, you know, balance it out. But for the most part, it's about the business. business. That's what I'm business. here for. I, right. I, I'm not. This is what I'm doing. This is where I'm going. This is what I'm eating. This is what I'm about to do. This is what I'm thinking about. I'm not. 24 hours broadcast in every little fucking aspect that's like right. you know and, and and now i will say this though at the same time the people that do it and they're doing it as a personality or you're doing it as i'm an influencer and i got fucking one million views and one million likes and motherfuckers like seeing what i'm doing what i'm eating and you're getting paid for it do it. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I ain't gonna hate on you. Yeah, fuck it. If I'm getting paid, I'm I'm making a million dollars a year. Once again, not working my ass off, not busting my ass forty hours a week, 
Right. I ain't got no college degree. I ain't got to slave in the mill. I ain't got to do all this bullshit. And I'm making a million dollars just by showing y'all motherfuckers, hey, I'm doing this and I'm wearing this. And I'm, nigga, I ain't mad at you. Do your thing. Shit. Right. Facts. Do your motherfucking thing. Facts. I already know. Yeah. So, yeah, I give you that. But, uh, oh, yeah, we we way off. What, what, <laughs> what was your next one? You did Tyler. What was your. Uh, oh, my next one was just going to be uh, the exclusive audio footage for clips. And all I want to say about the exclusive audio footage of clips, if y'all don't know, that's the actual first uh, studio album from them that was shelved in favor of Lord Willing, what, two years after that? Mm-hmm. So, um, <clears throat> but yeah, with the. That was just one of those things where it's just, you know, it, it, it snuck by me. I was like, oh, shit. I didn't even know that they had this, you know, whatever album thing like that. And then I listened to it. It, it, it was I, I don't want to say it was bad, but it was definitely unorthodox. And I want to say it's unorthodox because it had the involvement of Pharrell. Pharrell was there for some of the tracks. But it it basically if you had never heard clips before this, it could it could have been a turning point for you for clips and that could be either good or bad because i thought that the album was a was very sneak peeky of what they would of what they could slash did go on to be as far as their you know them their their chemistry with each other as well as you know kind of the beat selection and their flow and everything like that they obviously were a lot younger than they were hell even uh even three, four years after that. But it was just, um, I, I was like, it's missing something. I, I felt like that a whole lot of time. It just was, uh, it was unorthodox because I just felt like it was missing something. Maybe it was just that Star Trek slash for real production, like fully all the way through or for mm-hmm. most of it. But it, it just, it you know, it sound, it's unorthodox because it's, even today, it, it just got re-released. I don't know if you know this. Uh, at least on Apple Music, it got re-released. It didn't get re-released on Tidal. Um, but it's on there. And just listening to it, even still, from when I first heard it, still, it sounds the exact same. It sounds unmastered. It sounds unmixed. It sounds mm-hmm. like, you know, th- you know, some of the vocals could probably be higher. Maybe some of the, the beats is kind of uh, overshadowing the lyrics and stuff like that. So it's kind of it's unorthodox from a kind of an unfinished kind of, you know, did they really mean to, you know, was this should this have been put out or maybe it got shelved for a reason. You know, it's, it's just one of them situations where, you know, I think it was one of those kind of growing pain things. They had to make something like this or come up with something like this to come out with what they would eventually come out with. It's kind of like they were finding the formula and perfecting it with the uh, with the exclusive audio footage. But at the yeah. same time, I was just, I was like, eh, I don't know. It's some stuff on there, but I was like, I don't, I'm glad they didn't come out with this. I'm glad this wasn't my introduction to clips. I'll put it like that. And I, and that's the thing. Like, I, I saw this on your list. I don't know anything about this project at all. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't never heard. I don't know nothing mm-hmm. about it. I, I definitely got to check it out. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's just shit. I didn't know nothing about it. I, I don't even know what I was doing. I was probably, I think I was looking into um, I was looking into Malice after he changed his name because I never really knew a whole lot about Malice. And I think that's kind of how I kind of came across it and was like, oh, they came out with this. And I'm like, what the hell? I, yeah, I had to torn it and everything, Drew. That's how I had to do it back in the day. Like, oh, yeah. W- yeah, I had to torn it. Uh, what, what, was, what was this? This was like 2012, 2013. I had to straight torn it because I couldn't find it nowhere. It was like if you look it up or search it, it's like it didn't even exist. This shit didn't even have a Wikipedia page until like a couple years later. But I'm like, that's how obscure this shit was. It didn't even have a Wikipedia page. You know, Wikipedia damn near encompassed everything. So everything. damn. So I knew if it didn't have a Wikipedia page, I said, yeah, this might this might be some small time shit. But just on it's I think it's unorthodox on the strength of that it wasn't quite the formula that we're used to from clips. And it kind of showed them they kind of they didn't really sound sure of themselves like, it, you know, it seemed like they was, you know, they kind of they kind of knew what they wanted to do. But, you know, was that what they wanted to go forward trying to do? That's kind of like the sense I got. Hmm. Interesting. But it's on it's only on Apple Music right now because I, I got Apple Music and I got title. It's not on title, but it's on Apple Music. I don't know what's up with that. 
Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, was that your list? Or I think that was. Yeah, that that was that was everything I came up with. I'll give an honor. I'll give an honorable mention to uh to Pac with two apocalypse now. Um, because that was that was just well, number one from somebody who learned about two apocalypse now last. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> so from somebody, it, ain't that a bitch? I, I learned more about the albums that came out after he died more and quicker than I did about the damn first album. But wow. anyway, um, yeah, the Tupacalypse Now, that was a whole different nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, was, yes, it was. That, that was what made that shit on Orthodox. That was a whole different nigga. That wasn't, I don't know who that guy was. He he sounded like a, a pretty, you know, smart, bright, upstanding young man. But yeah. uh, I wasn't, uh, I, I wasn't familiar with him too much. <laughs> I, yeah. I was like, yeah, I was like, and that's crazy. I don't know why when I was younger, Drew, when I was, because, you know, when I was young, Tupac was like my hero. So when I was like eight, nine, ten years old, I, I just thought this nigga was like, oh, and then when I got to, when I finally got to 25, and I was like, wait, that's how old this nigga was? Yeah. That's it? Right. But then I'm I'm thinking that I, you know I'm eight nine years old I'm thinking this nigga 32, 34, some shit like that grizzled vet type shit I'm like this nigga's a vet this nigga know how it goes on out here and then I hear this young uh, mouse face uh, voice nigga on Tupac lives now I'm yeah. just everything everything was different wasn't no holes present wasn't no it wasn't a whole not no gunplay towards other niggas present yet. Uh, the, the all uplifting, not just not just you know not just in there throughout the course. It was all uplifting. It was some public enemy. It was some young public enemy type shit. Yeah, and just and going against the system and fuck this government and they doing they doing it. They scared of us young black males and shit like that. And I'm just like, oh, this nigga's the son of a Black Panther for real. Mm. That's where it is. Okay, okay. And, and then, but you know, a, go ahead. A, a lot of people say that too. I've heard people use that because. Like, you know, it's no secret. I mean, a lot of the newer music, a lot of it is trash. A lot of it is good. But that's kind of been the narrative with uh, some of the youngins that put out this music that's just kind of lower quality. Uh, you know, some people be trying to defend it and be like, well, you know, they young, they kids, they just blah, 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 blah. And I've heard people be like, no, nah, because Tupac was motherfucking 18 and 19 and spitting some fucking prophetic deep ass yeah. uh, shit. They was like Nas yeah. was fucking 17, 18, 18 when he wrote Ill Matter. Deep ass life changing shit. So you just Biggie was 24 when Ready to Die came out. Yeah. So they 20, like, 23, 24. Yeah. Yeah. So they was like, just don't get these kids a pay. Oh, just just because you 19, 20, you have the right to just spit ignorant shit. Like, but at the same time, you know, we we look at them though. Them was pro them was special cases too. Yeah, you know the, the you know so every every single you know every single twenty four year old or every single eighteen year old or every single whatever ain't just gonna be necessarily gifted like that. So you yeah. you kind of you can you can probably cut them a little bit of slack, but at the same time, shit. Look at some of them background, like you know the the, the background Tupac came from, and then like look at the background of, of a Kodak Black and what he probably came from. That's two different fucking backgrounds. Yeah. Of shit, you know. Yeah, it so it, that might have something to do with it. So that that Tupac's background is gonna produce a whole different nigga at eighteen versus what Kodak's background is gonna produce at eighteen. Right. You know, uh -huh. Tupac eighteen. Tupac at eighteen was probably he was probably twenty five when he was eighteen. <laughs> right. And this nigga and this nigga Kodak was probably he, he probably eighteen still sixteen fifteen. You right. see what I'm saying? So that's the right. difference. I think that's the difference in the two. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, man. I think we both had some uh some pretty dope ass lists. Um, you know, there there's classics all around uh hip hop the way it goes. You got your mainstream shit. Uh, you got your uh, you know, your underground shit, and it's classics all across the board. But I think we uh we got some pretty good ones in there. Ho hopefully, mm -hmm. we got y'all familiar uh with some shit that you ain't never heard you can go check it out and be uh you know open your open your mind open up your world to some dope shit you didn't even know that existed 
That, that was pretty much uh, one of the goals with this segment. So I think we did that, man. But uh, once again, we appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate, appreciate you listening. Uh, once again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification button. Uh, do not do not forget dopesthiphoptees.com. It's summertime, y'all. This is a perfect time for it. You know, when you go out, especially in the summer, we all going to be outside this summer. You know what I'm saying? Pandemic and less down. You want to stand out. You want to be fly. Don't you? You want that shit where people see you in it and they just look and they like, damn, you might even ask you where you get that from. Cause it ain't that mm -hmm. regular average run of the mill shit, man. Dope is yep. hip hop tees. They're cool tees made for cool people that love hip hop culture. They are created by cool people that love hip hop culture. Dope is hip hop tees. Y'all check it out. We work to work, you late to work, I holla and they send it You know my pride was colder than Chicago in December All right, all right, so you have been watching, you have been listening to Quest Convo, the podcast with your favorite hip-hop connoisseur, Drew Soul Quest Quest Convo mm -hmm. is where we talk the culture because we are the culture And it's your boy, Dav Devious, man, we just thankful that we got y'all along for another episode. We're going to always keep these topics fresh. we always going to come with the knowledge, and we always going to come in with an open mind, willing to learn from each other, and willing to learn from y'all. So oh, until next time. Oh, yeah, and we out, y'all. Peace and love. Yes, sir.